Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. So today we're going to take a look at the Orange 35RT. It has built-in reverb and a built-in tuner, uh, auxiliary import, uh, which is 8th inch, so you can hook up like your iPhone, your iPad, your Android device, MP3 player, iPod, whatever, um, to play your tunes along and jam at the same time. It also has a headphone jack that's quarter inch uh, headphone jack, uh, stereo of course. Um, on the back, you're going to find uh, it does have an effects loop um, as well as a foot switch control so you can switch between the dirty channel and the clean channel. Now, I have a little bit of reverb turned on, not a whole lot, because it can get pretty lush on this thing, but this is a uh, 9 o'clock setting. 12 o'clock. 3 o'clock. And full out. So I like it somewhere around 9-ish. So this is the clean channel to start with. Bass, mid, and treble are all at 12 o'clock. Uh, our clean channel is at 9. And the guitar I'm using is my Epiphone Les Paul Custom Pro. Um, and we're going to go through the pickups as far as um, the bridge, the uh, two pickups, so center position, and of course our neck pickup. So I'm not going to mess around with splitting coils and all that other jazz. No, necess no necessity for it. And I do have the amp mic'd up with a Zoom H1 24-bit recorder, which is actually just pushing its signal direct into my mixing board, which is a Yamaha. It's 16-bit, which is then going into my Focusrite box, which is 24-bit, so it gets reconverted into 24 again. position. Neck. Now we can clean this up a bit. So we'll add a bit of trouble there. A little bit more meds, and we'll pull back the bass a bit. Okay, let's uh, just put everything back to 12 o'clock. Let's bring the volume on the clean right to 12.
EQ is very responsive on this thing too, uh, which is another thing to be aware of. So now humbuckers do have a lot higher output too than single coils, so it's going to definitely sound different on a Tele or a Strat. So. Let's bring that volume up to a uh, clean channel at 3 o'clock. Bass at zero. Nice natural overdrive to her. Let's put it back to 11 o'clock. Bring the bass at 3. Let's bring the treble in the mid at 12. <laughs> start the gain at 12 and uh, the dirty as they call it your main volume at uh, nine o'clock Not very punchy at that level. Let's bring her up to 11. Both pickups. Bass back to 12. Again, three o'clock. That's the bridge. Let's go the opposite direction. Let's put the, the dirty rate dimed and the gain at uh, 9 o'clock. <laughs> 10 o'clock on the gain. Bridge. Neck. 
we need more mids, less bass, and a tinch more treble. <laughs> Bring that gain to twelve o'clock. anyways you wonder why guitar player well musicians <laughs> are actually mostly deaf this could be why um, anyways so my opinion on the amp um, I think it shines the best on the dirty channel when you bring the dirty right up and then just use the gain because going the other way around um, I find it's just disgusting okay there are a lot of amps out on the market, um, as we all know, and very few of them actually usually have a, a really good dirty channel in them. You know, this is why we use, you know, uh, metal distortion pedals or overdrives or, or what our own separate gear, period, for the kind of distorted sound we want to hear, right? And, um, but this thing does an amazing job on the clean side. It does amazing if you use the dirty, you know, cranked up and then start bringing the gain up. I could bring the dirty back, and uh, let's just do that. Let's bring the dirty back. So we're going to go with uh, 1 o'clock on the dial on dirty, and let's bring the gain around 11. <laughs> That's nice and punchy, and I like it. That's the bridge, so let's go to the neck. setting that way but anyways that's just me it's kind of like what I'm trying to hear what I want um, it's a 35 watt amp okay it, it's not like a high high powered amp okay so it's only got a certain amount of headroom but with the headroom it does have it actually does a really good job especially on the clean channel um, and it does great on a pedal board as well uh, so if you just want to stay on the clean just use your own pedal board be it a guitar processor board or your own one that you built from a bazillion pedals. Knock yourself silly, um, this thing does take pedals very well. 
which I will be doing a video on as far as a processor goes, because I don't do the whole separate pedal thing anymore. I just use processor boards. I find them actually a lot more <laughs> convenient and less problematic. But um, anyways, um, I like it unclean. The dirty is good, but I, I don't like doing the whole thing where you bring the gain up and you know then you, you leave the dirty down lower because it gets really gross, right? Um, like to me, I don't like that. You know, going the opposite way with those controls seems to work out the best for it. Um, now this is an amp that if you're going to try performing live with this thing, you're definitely going to want to mic it up. It is not going to compete in a large environment. Smaller environments, yes, like in your local church. No problem, you don't even need to mic it up. Unless you want to get into the mix and you guys record your stuff, well then you might want to definitely mic it up in that uh, sense because it does not have a line out on it. It does have headphone out, which you could probably use to go in through a DI and into your mixer. Uh, and then have the sound backfed to you to a uh, stage monitor. You could do that sort of thing, you know. Uh, a little different for dialing in the tones, but it can be done, right? Um, anything's possible. Um, and if you feel like getting into modifying, like a lot of guys do on YouTube, you could put your own cab out on this thing as far as, you know, going into a bigger cab, but you're still not going to go with a line out signal other than going through the headphone jack. And even that, you got to watch how much of that headphone jack signal you push into a mixing board because otherwise it's going to sound like crap. So unless the circuit is designed to go both ways, uh, headphone and record out, well, then that's something you got to keep in mind. But um, anyways, I think with a 10-inch speaker in there, it's not a very big machine. It is a closed back, uh, so it's going to have a, a bit more of the restricted woof to the bass, um, so it can actually, you know, crunch it a little bit. Um, but you can, you know, dial back the bass, bring up the mids and trebles, and, you know, clean things up quite a bit, actually, you know. Um, I think overall it's a great amp. Now, I would give this amp personally myself. Um, I, I think about it, and I, and I listen to it, and I'm like, you know, and I look at the price. I mean, it was $379 Canadian. Uh, by the way, link down below in the description of the video. If you want to buy this thing and, and you live in Canada, the Long and McQuaid link will be there. If you don't live in Canada, you're on your own. Go to your own music store that sells orange products or Amazon or where have you. Uh, but in Canada, I recommend Long and McQuaid. But um, anyways, uh, putting it up on an amp stand, also a very good idea because then you're going to get your amp on the right angle for the frequencies of the you know, sound traveling throughout your room and so on, and you're going to be able to actually hear the amp properly for what it's actually putting out. Okay, so I definitely recommend uh, an amp stand. This is a Yorkville, um, what do they call this one, IAS4, I guess it's, it is, IAS4 Yorkville. Um, it can go in adjustable height, too. It's at its bottom level, which is where I need it in here, uh, but it can go up quite high, you know, and it can support um, quite a bit of weight for amps. I think it was like 100 pounds or 150. I don't know. You'd have to check the specs online for the stand, but it can withstand a very heavy amp uh, without any difficulty. And it is padded, too, uh, on the front forks and on the back forks to protect your amp so it doesn't, you know, mar up your Tolex. But um, overall, I think it's a really good amp. It's a good practice amp, especially in here. Um, you know, if you, if you want to get into the lower volumes of things... Now, the only way you're going to plug an acoustic electric guitar into this thing uh, safely and to also have it reproduce the sound properly is you're going to actually need a preamp pedal or a processor board that has an acoustic preamp in it. Then you would plug the guitar into that board and then feed it through here and then you're safe and it reproduces the sound um, properly. Okay, uh, Going direct in can harm the amp, kind of like you don't plug a bass guitar into a regular guitar amp because in time, I will guarantee you, you will cook the sucker, okay? Um, but that's just the way it goes. Do what you want to do. Um, acoustic simulator pedals also are great for electric guitars to make them sound a lot like an acoustic. Uh, I have an uh, acoustic sim in my, uh, my pedal board, and I've run it through this, and it sounds really good uh, on any of my guitars, actually. Um, but this is testing with a humbucker guitar. Strats are going to be lower output. So are tellies in comparison to something with a humbucker in it. 
Um, and I'm talking common strats and tallies where it's an SS or SSS for the strat. Um, you know, so keep that in mind. Uh, humbuckers are much higher output uh, than single coil pickups. But I can split these two uh, into single coils if I want to because uh, they do have that feature. Both of them split. Neck split. Let's bring the volume up. Back to humbucker mode. difference there. Anyways, um, no, I have no problems with a solid 4 out of 5 on this thing. Um, nothing is perfect and the one gripe I really do have on this thing uh, is actually the um, tuner. The tuner, although it works beautiful, it's a great tuner and all, um, it does not cut off the signal um, t from the guitar. So if you're going to try tuning your guitar on stage and you're going to use the tuner that's built in, um, yeah, everybody's going to hear you retuning, <laughs> especially if you're trying to do that in the quiet. Not going to happen because if you roll back the volume to zero, of course, you got no signal going to the amp. So um, I would suggest roll back the volume and use a uh, headstock type tuner like the Snarks uh, or use a pedal board tuner that will cut off your signal and that's the best way to do that and then you also don't have to mess with your controls on your guitar either. Uh, otherwise the tuner is actually really accurate um, on its own. It's great. Um, I think it's wonderful little tuner. It does the job <coughs> but um, you know a lot of guys want a built-in tuner so Orange answered the call of course. We'll give you a tuner. Um, but uh, yeah overall a great little amp. I like it. Um, I like it more at the lower levels and slightly lifted a bit. Uh, when it starts getting a little bit too high up there, um, that's when you can actually hear it starting to clip a little bit. But you can still clean that up a little bit more. It's not a big deal, okay? You can still clean it up more. But it depends on the sound you're going after, too. Like, um, this has that uh, speaker of the world speaker in it, whatever they call it. I have no idea what kind of speaker it actually is that Orange throws in their amps. They just have their own name for theirs. Certainly changing the speaker to something different is going to change the sound of the amp. So you could go to a greenback or you could, you know, even put a PV Lou Marble speaker in there if you wanted to, you know. Um, but you just make sure that the ohms are correct. So you're going to have to make sure you watch the ohms. It has to match because if you go higher or lower, um, yeah, you can also damage your amp too. Uh, so you have to have the same ohms. But um, I think the speaker that's in it works just fine. You know, you can work with it um, easily enough. Uh, the controls are very sensitive on the amp. So a little tiny amount makes a huge difference in your overall tone. So keep that in mind even at lower or higher volumes. You know, a little bit of that movement on any of the EQs um, is going to make a big difference. You know, and especially with what you have for your pedal settings on top of that. Uh, so that's another thing to look in uh, before you, you know, just rely on one thing but um, anyhow um, thanks for watching guys I hope you enjoyed the video um, I don't generally mic up amps but this thing um, if I'm gonna give you the best sound reproduction because a couple of people have complained about me using a camcorder uh, which I don't know why I'm trying to just go for the what I hear is what you're gonna hear kind of thing at least in my environment but this kind of um, Miking it up like this kind of negates the whole room acoustics to a certain point. Um, you're not actually getting to hear my room acoustics hardly, uh, if at all. I mean, like, probably about 99% of my acoustics in my room with the sound is not being captured because of where the mic is to the amp, right? I mean, we could try this with the mic in a different spot, whatever, uh, away from the amp. That might work. Who knows? But we decided to go with doing it this way. And this is actually the best quality microphone that I own at present, um, you know. Um, and uh, it does actually a really wonderful job. 
you know, for being a stereo mic and 24-bit. Um, but uh, anyhow, uh, that all being said and done, um, if you enjoyed the video, hey, thumbs up. If you didn't, you didn't, you know. Um, but uh, do check out the amp for yourself, you know. Just be aware that when you play it in the store, it's going to sound different at home, okay. It always, always will be different at home. It'll be different in different venue setups as well. It's going to sound different, uh, you know. So you get a rough idea, anyhow. Um, and stay tuned for the video where we're going to run through my pedal board uh, with this thing. And you can hear what it's like on a pedal board and how well it takes the pedal board uh, with the different effects and, you know, how I've chosen to set things up for things that I like to hear through this amp and, and the way I like to hear it. And again, we'll mic it up the same, same way, okay? Um, but uh, in the meantime, hey, thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.